ashi. So this is, this is cross ashi. Ashi just means leg. Um, it just means like, so for instance, this is one type of an entanglement where my legs are wrapped around one of his. Cross ashi just means that like my legs are on the inside and his leg is also on the inside. So it's going across my hips, all right? So when you're in cross ashi, the first thing I want you guys to do is you put your legs on the inside and this leg is over this hip. Who, who, who doesn't know this position already? Does anybody not know this position? A couple, a couple people? Okay, well, it's, it's pretty simple. If you get confused and get in here, don't worry. I'll, I'll walk you through it. Um, just put your feet on the inside and his leg also on the inside. And then you're going to come forward and grab this secondary leg, okay? So we call this the primary leg. That's the main target of our offense. And then this is the secondary leg, okay? Um, so we're going to come towards the secondary leg. One hand grabs the ankle, one hand grabs over the knee. And then I'm going to pull it towards me and I wrap it up with an ankle lock, okay? And then I go put the foot. Okay? Now, the first thing we're going to look at from this position is actually a counter for Manuel on me. Okay? So, this leg is going to come out, then he's going to pull this foot to the inside, and he's going to extend this leg. And he's going to pull, yeah, he's going to pull on my ankle. Okay? We call this a, the name of this move is a honey stick. Okay? It's a terrible name. I did not come up with it, but this is what people call it. Alright? So, we're here. Don't worry just yet how you're going to get out of like this. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna show you guys the basics of the position. We're gonna get there later on. But we're here. For now, you just feel the control for a second, right? Uh, your elbow is between these two legs, by the way. See where my left elbow is? Yeah. And I go foot to foot. Uh, we'll talk more later on about why we're going foot to foot. You can go triangle, but I like foot to foot better. You can see my foot like configuration. Yeah. So now I'm just gonna let go of this. He's gonna bring the knee back. He's gonna grab my ankle. And he's gonna pummel his leg through. And now he locks up his legs, okay, like so. Now when you're here, what I want you to focus on is I'm gonna get on my left hip and I point my toes, okay? See how my, my toes are pointed there? And the back of my knee is facing the Manuel's hips. Okay, don't worry about why we're doing that now. I'm gonna explain that later on, but for now, this is where I want you guys to end up. He has performed a honey stick on you and you are doing what we call hiding the heel, okay? And we started from a cross ashi Situation. When you start here, you come forward, one hand above the knee, one hand on the ankle. And notice how I lower my leg here too. Like if I'm here, it's hard to pull over my leg. So I go, and this brings my chest forward, okay? I come forward, I grip, and I go put the foot. Now I'm going to let my well grab my ankle, pull that through. He gets his honey stick, he crosses his feet. Now I'm going to get onto my left hip, and I point my toes like so. And I point the back of my knee to his hips. Make sense, guys? Good? All right, let's just start one, two, three. So now let's, let's continue on from here. So my wall has honey stick me. The first thing we gotta do when we get honey stick is take note of, let's actually call this something different than a honey stick. I can't take it, don't <laughs> When he does this pummel counter, okay? Uh, when he does this pummel counter, the first thing I wanna do is point the back of my knee into his hips. Why? Because we talked about this yesterday at the first seminar. Whenever I can point the back of my knee into someone's hips, it's gonna be very difficult for them to gain heel exposure. Okay, the first thing they're gonna to wanna to look for is a heel up. If my knee is uh, like here, the front of my knee is facing his hips, see how he can get the outside heel hook on me? Yeah, that's, that's very, very bad. That's like the worst possible uh, leg lock to be inside of. So what I wanna have is the back of my knee facing into his hips. That's gonna make immediately the, uh, the heel hook very difficult. I'm also going to curl my leg because I don't want the ankle drifting from the ribs. If the ankle is drifting from the ribs, he, could, he can't heel hook me here, but he could go for an ankle lock, right? So we want to avoid that. If we're here, I'm back healing. I'm on my left hip. My knee is pointing down, and the back of my knee faces to his hips, and my toes are pointing. It's going to be very hard for him to get ankle locks, um, heel hooks. The only thing maybe he could go for is a toe hold here, but the reality is, is like, even that's going to be difficult because it's going to be pretty easy for me to pull my knee back, okay? Now, someone asked a good question, where should I like, where should I be aiming to have my leg here? Okay, well that's gonna change based upon how we feel about the situation in terms of our offense and his offense, okay? So let, let's start looking at what you should be looking at offensively, and then like some of the things that can happen as we do that, and how that's gonna inform what we wanna do with this leg. Okay, so first thing first, we, we wanna make sure this leg doesn't get away from us, okay? We wanna, right now his legs are crossed, because he's controlling my leg, but that's also um, keeping this leg safe. But at the same time, because his legs are locked, that's gonna give us a chance to grip it, okay? So the first thing I wanna do is 
I want to take my left hand and go underneath, like so. Okay, whenever we, um, whenever we try to separate someone's legs, I want you guys to focus on looking at where there's empty space. That's where you're going to be able to separate the feet, uh, the legs rather. Right now, if I try to go at my most feet, there's not, there's no space here, right? This is like going to be really, really difficult to separate. Whereas if he locks up a triangle, uh, like a deep triangle, here, if I try to go inside here, this doesn't make any sense. Here's where I want to go, okay? So if you have, usually here, they'll be at the, the ankles are crossed, okay? So what we're going to do is we go underneath like so, and now this hand is going to go to the primary leg, okay? So left hand is gripping underneath the top of the secondary leg, and this is going through right here, okay? So I go here, and now what I want to do is I start to work my shoulder back in between his two legs. Now, sometimes what will happen is if he's squeezing like pretty tight, is at first you aren't able to get it, but you just keep like hopping a little bit back. And so now, see how my left hand goes and grips my right shoulder? What I've done is I've put a wedge in between his legs. Does that make sense, guys? So now when he tries to relock his legs, he can't because my shoulder's in his way. Now with this hand, what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm just gonna show you without the secondary leg so you can see. I take this hand, we could just grab and lift it up, but that's not really as strong as what we are gonna do. We're gonna take this hand, and we bring the wrist back, and we go behind like so. And then my elbow comes back like so, okay? So then I'm here, I go like this, and I lift the heel off the floor by using my wrist coming back to elevate while I bring my elbow down. Does that make sense, guys? So I'm pulling at two points. I'm pulling into my hip through his knee, and my wrist is pulling the ankle up. If I just go here, this can definitely work, but it's not gonna be as strong, all right? So uh, we're here, I'm like here, I take this hand, I go through, and I sit up, and as soon as I do, I catch the inside heel hook, okay? And then we're ready to start applying the inside heel hook, okay? Um, we're not gonna talk about finishing it right now, but this would be our target, okay? And now we're ready to go. Now, what do we do if, uh, so your legs are locked together. What, what do we do if we feel like, okay, he, like I'm, I'm doing this uh, and I'm keeping myself safe, but I still feel like he, the, here the heel hook thread is like very minimal, provided I stay on my left hip. And it's not hard to stay on your left hip. If you ever feel like you're getting bumped on your right hip, just take this hand grip here and just hit out. Like it's very, very easy, okay? It's not hard. But the ankle lock threat can be a little bit more difficult to avoid just by turning your hips. So here, if Benwell takes an ankle lock on me and I feel like, okay, shit, like this is getting really, really tight. Like this is, um, like I can't, I can't fish the inside heel here. I feel like I'm gonna get injured. What I want you to do is start extending the right leg, like so. Okay, so he's got, he's got his legs locked at first. I would still probably like reach for this leg here and I'm gonna extend my right leg now I reach for the inside heel hook, and I go for this. Now hopefully what's gonna happen is, he lets go of that, and he comes forward to hand fight. Now, you just retract this leg, bring it to the inside, and you finish the cross hashi inside heel hook. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're here, and we feel like, okay, this ankle lock <laughs> is way more, like, it's got more power on it than I feel like I can deal with here. So instead of focusing on just, fighting here. You, you might have success with this, but man, I feel like he's, he's leaning back and I'm gonna get finished with the ankle lock. What I wanna focus on is instead initially is extending this right leg out. Now as he goes back to finish that, and extend the right leg, it's gonna be very difficult for him to keep his legs, um, his legs connected, okay? Now I can come back. And even if he does like hold on to the ankle lock, okay, now we have an inside heel hook versus ankle lock and inside heel hook is almost always gonna win this, all right? So does that make sense, guys? Yes? All right, so let's get started. One, two, three. Great. So now, we're gonna look at it from the perspective of the guy performing this pummel counter. So, I arrive here. The position that I have right now is called an outside ashi, because my leg's running outside, okay? But it's like a weird outside ashi where like, this leg is here. Like a normal outside ashi is like, is like this, okay? So, this move, like, the idea is to go back for an, uh, an outside heel hook. Okay, but the reality is, if my mom knows what, to, like, what we just talked about, this is a very hard heel hook to get. Like you should, 
realistically, like, I don't think the guy in my perspective should be getting this hill up. It's very difficult. So let's say we go for this and we feel like, oh man, I can't dig for that heel. And now he's threatening the inside heel hook on me. What should I do? Well, the first thing you should do is open up your legs. Okay, that seems like very dangerous. And it can be if you don't know how to do it right. The thing about having my legs connected is this does keep me safe temporarily, but it limits my, my mobility options. I can't transition into other positions, okay? So I want to be able to open my legs so I can transition to other positions, but I also want to knock it like leg locked as I do it. So when I do it, I want to open up, point my toes, and point the back of my knee at his hips, okay? So we never open up like this, okay? That's just going to get me heel up, all right? That's not, very, that's not very smart. So instead, you want to open up. Usually what I'll do is I'll, like, I'll hold this knee so it's hard for him to pull it back. See how I take my hands and I cup and I, my forearm is going over the top of the knee. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, so I, I cup the, like the, the bottom of the knee, my forearm goes over the top. Now I'm going to open up and I hide like this, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, uh, this hand, I'm going to grip the heel here, and I'm going to take this out, okay? Now if he doesn't like spin this way to chase the heel hook, at all. I'm just going to sit back, I'm going to grip this foot, I'm going to pull it over, and I'm going to go to a 50-50. Okay? But if he does spin uh, spin that way, I go here, if he does spin this way, I'm just going to hide my heel, I'm going to roll with him, and then I'm going to pull everything across. I, I go from the feet up to the knee, and then once I get up to the knee, you can lock your legs and now you're in 50-50. Does that make sense, guys? So, we started off and we were in a cross ashi. We pummeled, we got an outside ashi, but it's a, it's a weird outside ashi because this leg's kind of in our way, okay? Well, you, can go, you can go for the outside heel hook here, you can go for the ankle lock by all means, but in my opinion, the odds are stacked in his favor here. It's difficult to get those things going. Um, so in the event that you feel like you can't get them, right, which may happen if he knows what he's doing here, I want you to make sure he doesn't get control of this leg. If he does get this grip underneath here, Right away, what we want to do is do what's called a front pummel. Where I take this hand, I grip, and I pummel to the front of his bicep. Okay, so let's go back one step. So if I see that coming, I can even do it like before it's happening. Okay, but if he, if he does get it, you've got to like, like this is not a good situation for me. Like this is bad. He's controlling my secondary leg, and it's hard for me to rotate my hips to hide the heel of my primary leg. So right away, I want to strip this grip, pummel my foot to his bicep, and then start getting it away. And you'll notice how I'm like always holding this leg too, right? Okay? Because if he pulls this back, he could put me in a cross ashi. And this isn't the end of the world, but it's like, it's easier to get to 50-50 with this leg here. Okay, it makes sense, guys? So I go here, I bring the heel up. Now, you, usually what he'll do is he'll chase me in this direction. He's trying to get the heel up. If I don't rotate, he's gonna spin, and then he catches the heel up. We talked about this yesterday. But what we got to do is, as he spins, I rotate with him. And now, yeah, if the feet land there, that's awesome. But if not, you go from the feet to the knee. We pull it up the whole time, I'm hiding my heel. So I'm, I'm constantly pointing my toes, and the back of my knee is facing into his hips. Does that make sense, guys? All right, pull forward, and then lock up my legs. All right, make sense? Right, let's get started. One, two, three. All right, guys, so let's just go over a few things I see people doing wrong um, that you can correct. So the, the first thing is, when you, when you get here um, and you're hiding your heel, you, you don't need to curl the leg like this. This, this isn't wrong because, like, remember, guys, the, the only thing you really need to do, like, the, like, you have to do, right, is the back of your knee needs to point into his hips. Like, that is happening right now, right? Um, so, like, you're not, you're not doing something wrong, per se, but I think this is not as good as it could be because the thing is, is, like, I, right now, the back of my knee is facing into his hips, but it's not just about pointing the back of your knee into his hips. Like right now, it's about making sure that the back of your knee can continue to face into his hips. Okay, so like, what that means is I've got to rotate with him. Do you guys get what I mean? Like if he spins, I've got to be able to spin with him. This is hard to spin. Whereas if my leg is if my leg is straight, like this is so much easier to spin. Okay, makes sense, guys. So now, like, what, focus on having a straight leg. Okay, it doesn't have to be like 100% straight. I, I usually have like a very slight bend, but I won't curl like this. Because now when I go to spin like this, uh, if I, uh, another thing guys, um, when you get this leg out, another detail that can help is, you can go from the knee, and you can push at the ankle into your hip, 
And now you just extend this leg out. Like that makes it like very, very easy to pop this leg up. Okay? Now here, if my leg is curled, the spin is really awkward. Like it feels like very clunky for me. And honestly, I think like you're gonna let uh, keep going. You're gonna land like this and then he's gonna like catch the heel hook on you. Do you guys see what I mean? Yeah, that's no good. So what I want you guys instead to focus on is like if you're like very advanced, you could go curled leg and then straighten it out. Like you can cycle between that, right? But I I, I just straighten pretty much the whole time. Like I don't think you need to. Some people will say the advantage of curling your leg is that your foot is farther from his arm. Yeah, that's definitely true, but like we're talking about like like mm -hmm. inches. Like it's it's not like a significant difference, you know what I mean? Like it, to me that's like it's not really a big deal. I would rather focus on Okay, the back of my knee is missing into his hips. That's the primary defense. That's the main thing. And then I want to be able to rotate my, I want to be able to rotate. Uh, and to do that, I want like a more straight leg. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Okay, right, so now we're pushing in here, right? You could go to the knee, you could go to the ankle, pushing into the hip. We're just trying to keep him from being able to pull this leg back, okay? Now we go down here, open up. And now he's going to spin to chase us. Look at how extended my leg is, guys. Does that make sense? Because I want to be able to rotate my hips with him. And out here, we're trying to come up to the knee, then we lock up, and we're in a 50-50, okay? All right, let's work on this a little bit more, and we'll go on to the next thing. And, uh, as we run through this, okay, so we're here, we go for this, and we start hiding our heel, and we're bringing our secondary leg away from him. What he might try to do instead of chasing my leg in this way is he might grip my toes with his right hand on the, the uh, to your right hand go underneath the foot at the bottom. And you can put like that right there. It's good. Now pull it into your chest. And now pass off to the other side. So he might do this. And this is a reef. Okay, now he has a far hip ashi, but this is like a reefing ashi. And this is like very, very uh, bad. Okay, so this is going to change what I have to do completely. I can't, I can't just keep spinning when he does this. When I feel him gripping my toes, uh, let's, uh, let's turn it this way. So when I feel him gripping my toes, pulling it into his chest, the first thing I gotta do is, when he does that, so come back a little bit this way. When he does that, his feet start to turn this way. That's gonna give me an opportunity to grip and uh, hold, hold it tight to your chest. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, that's gonna give me an opportunity to grip, sit back, and come forward to an outside ashi. And then even now, even if he gets my leg all the way to the other side, which is what he was trying to do, this is not a, this is not a far hip ashi, this is now an outside ashi. Okay? There's no pressure going into the back of my knee, so he can't expose my heel immediately. And now we can start going into heel hook counters, okay? Um, so, uh, go on this leg now. So like, where is my contrast? Here, if he throws the leg to the other side, and up, so the legs are over here. If he throws my leg to this side, you guys see how there's pressure to the back of my knee? Okay, that's because of where his feet are. His feet are on the opposite hip, okay? If his feet are on this side, there's no pressure to the back of my knee, right? So for instance, if his feet are here, there's no pressure to the back. If I'm turned this way, it's because I'm not doing the right thing. All I have to do is rotate back this way, and now there's no pressure to the back of my knee, and I can hide my heel. Okay, so the first thing we want to do when we're here, if I feel like, if I feel like, okay, he's pulling this to the other side, like he's pulling that to the other side, and I know once it's over there, I'm going to be in an outside heel hook, and the reason I'm in an outside heel hook is because the feet are over here, and that means there's pressure to the back of my knee, and if there's pressure to the back of your knee, you can't hide your heel anymore, okay? So let's go back on the step. When I see this happening, the first thing I want to do is get the feet away from here. Because if the feet are away from here, they're over here, there's no pressure to the back of my knee. But I have to do this, like I have to do this as he's doing it. If, he, if it's on the other side, like now is not the time to be like <laughs> sitting back and doing this. He's gonna grab my ankle and he's like breaking my leg as I, as I, try, to, as I try to throw over there. This is not, that doesn't make sense at that point. But it's as he's doing it. So I feel him doing it, he goes to pass. And then usually, look, see how the legs like literally came up into my hands there? Like he, it, that'll happen like very frequently, okay? So I'm gonna grip here, we sit back, and as he passes off to the other side, we pass off, and then we just switch up to our other hip to hide the heel. So that's, a, that's an early defense. What if he beats you to the race, and he, he gets the heel hook on you? Okay, now my hand has to go to his ankle. 
Okay, look at my right hand and make a, if you can make a C grip, but any grip really is fine. You're just grabbing his ankle, low on his ankle. Okay, he uh, kept, kept the heel hook, but nice and light. So he's got a heel hook up me and I'm grabbing his ankle. I have to right away post on the floor and come up. Okay, so if you guys remember yesterday, we talked about uh, backside 50-50 defense. One of the things you're gonna wanna do is crowd towards him. Okay, what that's gonna enable you to do is start to get your knee out. See how, look at my right knee guys, see how that is coming out of his knee line? Right now, I am in a lot of danger. This is very bad, okay? If I just try to pull it out, he's gonna, he's gonna get me, okay? So instead what I wanna do is, I wanna come up on this left leg, and I wanna sit back towards him, and now as we spin, my, uh, keep spinning, my foot goes to his butt, he still has the heel hook, but I can push off and get out, okay? So, we're here, and he, he takes my foot, and he, he's, he's too fast for me, I can't, I can't, like the first thing I tried to do was move where his feet were, so he can't put the pressure to the back of my knee, giving him the heel. Okay, he was too fast, I wasn't able to stop that. Now, I have to go to his ankle. Don't go to his knee, okay? If you go to his knee, he can just extend this leg out, and it, uh, it's, you're, you're still gonna get caught, okay? So we go down here, and now you have to act very, very fast. There's nothing stopping this leg from moving. In, in fact, like, I'm moving the same way he wants to move at first. And that's okay because, like, that's the only way I can move and not get broken. So he's trying to go this way, I go that way, I come up. And see how my left leg comes up and I sit back? And in doing so, I'm also pushing down at the ankle and my knee starts to come out. Okay, it's super key that you don't let this knee go back in. Okay, if as we go back, I let the knee fall back in, I'm going to get finished with the outside heel hook. Okay, so you keep the knee out by up on my left leg, I'm sitting back and I'm pushing. Now, at, if, if he lets go, I'll just run away, but usually if they're good, that's not gonna happen. We keep rolling and my foot goes to his butt, and we're gonna, my, my, I'll keep rolling it. I go here, now, even if he has the heel hook, as long as my foot's on his butt and my knee is out, okay, he's not gonna be able to break me with the heel hook, okay? It's gonna, it feels very scary because he does still have the heel hook, but if your knee is out, your foot's on his butt, you kick, and you pull your leg out. Okay, make sense guys? Yes? Do you guys want to see it again? Yeah, okay. yeah. two times. Okay. <laughs> so we're here. Uh, first thing first guys, I'd like to prevent him from getting it if I can. So I'm gonna to try to throw his legs over here. Does that make, does this part like make sense? How, when I get the legs over there, there's no pressure to the back of my knee? Yeah. Okay, good. Also, by the way guys, feel free to like, if something doesn't make sense, like definitely like actually tell me. <laughs> anyway, so he throws it over there. Now here, okay, fuck, he, he, man, there are guys that are really good at doing this super fast, okay? So you can't always perform like the early defense. So he catches the heel here, okay, you've got to grip the ankle right away. Okay, right away your instincts have to be ankle grip. You come up, and you, it's, it's three things happening at once. So let's come back a little. So three things are happening at once. It's my left leg coming this way, my butt coming back into him, and I'm pushing down at the ankle. Actually, four things. I'm pushing down at the ankle. Those three things make the fourth thing happen, which is my knee comes out of his knees. Okay? So see this line between his knees? As long as my knee is inside that, I can get heel hooked. Okay? If your knee's outside of that line, um, you, can't, you can't really get heel hooked. There I'm, I'm trying to think if there's like any exceptions to this. There, there might be, but for the most part, you really can't get heel hooked. Okay? So here, and you see how, look, this leg coming up, my weight coming back, okay, I'm like basically sitting on him, and I'm pushing down at the ankle, okay? That will keep me safe from the, uh, uh, the, the heel, the outside heel. And my knee is now outside of this line, okay? Now, to get all the way out, I'm gonna wanna use my foot here, my left leg, as he continues to rotate, I go on his, I go on his butt, kick, I keep going, and I'm gonna kick to get out. Like right now, like, yeah, this is definitely scary, but realistically, as long as I'm pushing, you can pop your, your heel out and you're safe, okay? Make sense, guys? Yes. All right, good. Let's give it a try. One, two, three. All right, guys, so uh, let's break down two matches wherein we are going to see the situation play out of the what the 10th Planet guys call a, uh, a honey stick, okay? So the 10th Planet guys call the cross ashi with the saddle position, the honey hole, uh, and this counter is called a honey stick. <laughs> so now I have a folder on my computer called honey stick analysis <laughs> because of the 10th planet guys. Anyway, so 
yeah, we're gonna look at two different matches, and we're gonna kind of look at someone succeeding from each of the two possible scenarios you could be in, right? You could be the guy who has been honey sticked, or you could be the guy doing the honey sticking, all right? Let's first look at how we can effectively do the honey sticking, okay? This is also a really good match just to analyze very high level cross Ashi defense in general, okay? This is from uh, 2018. Yeah, also the quality of the video is pretty dog shit. So I'm using, I don't have Wi-Fi here in my apartment in Thailand yet. Uh, I am using my cell phone's hotspot and it's, the quality is fairly low, but I mean, you can definitely still clearly see everything that's happening, okay? Anyway, so Japanese going to put teeth into the cross Ashi. That's not really what I want to focus on in this video. I want to focus on what happens once they get into the position. All right, here we are. He's in the cross Ashi. First thing Juni's going to do, wisely collect the secondary leg. Whenever we're in the cross Ashi, okay, from an, the offensive uh, side of things, you want to control the secondary leg, okay, almost always, right? If you don't control the secondary leg, it's pretty easy for the defensive man to move his hips side to side and engage and either just escapes, okay, he can, do, he can defend, then he can escape, or he can defend and then counter, which is what we're going to see Keith does. Right? He does a good job of establishing defense here. Oh, sorry, of establishing uh, control of the secondary leg here. First thing uh, that we should take note of what Keith is doing is he's doing a really good job of hiding his heel. He uses a, an interesting defense here. Typically, you want a ballet foot, so you want to point your toes. We're going to see Keith doesn't do that. He boots. Okay, so um, a friend of mine named Frank Rosenthal... He also will boot rather than ba ballet foot. I don't know if this is something he's still doing, but this is something like years ago I talked to him about. His logic was it was easier to sort of stiff leg with a boot. And he said to me, he goes, oh, my feet are so big anyway that it doesn't really make a difference if I'm pointing the toes or booting, right? When you point the toes, the goal is to retract your heel as much as possible into the ankle to make it a very small target. But I guess if you have really big feet, it's a big target no matter what. So he thought it was easier just to boot, and uh, the main defensive mechanism, okay, from there would be rotating your legs such that the back of your knee is pointing into his hips, right? So this is what Keith is doing here. We see here he's turning onto his right hip. He's pretty square on his back, but if you look at the angle of his leg, he's rotating it within Junie's uh, hips to point the back of his knee at Junie's hips as much as he possibly can. Okay, at the same time, we're going to see repeatedly he looks to make this honey stick more counter. Okay. Juni reestablishes control. Here, oh, let's watch this again. He gets the cross Ashi. Juni's holding onto the, the secondary leg. He's going to let go. Here he has what we call an over under, okay, or a six point wedge, is what Danaher calls it. I just usually call it an over under. Um, lots of videos on this on my Patreon if you don't know what it is. He's controlling the secondary leg with his left arm so that his right arm can reach through, grip the ankle, or the heel, and then the left elbow can punch back to get the heel. So we're holding the secondary leg for as long a period of time as possible before looking to pursue heel exposure with our left arm, okay? Punches back for the, the heel hook, not able to get it because Keith is rotating his hips well. When he recognizes that, he never lets go of the secondary leg. He swims with the left arm to go back for the heel hook, and then... Re, he, you know, he loses a little bit of control. Maybe he did let go of it. Yeah, he, he did, actually. Anyway, once he recognized that he wasn't able to get the heel hook, he sat back up and established a good control of the secondary leg once again. Good move. And he makes an overhook with the left arm. That's always going to be stronger. It's easier to hold on to an overhook than it is uh, the sort of a scoop grip wherein you would have an over-under position. He keeps going for the, the over-under. And then eventually, he's going to shift right, right about here. This is an over-under position. See how it's on top of his shoulder? He's going to switch from that to a double cross Ashi. See how, it's pulling, see how he's pulling it to the other side of his body? This is generally the next step in the sequence that you'll run through. Okay, So you'll go for an over-under. Should that fail, the next step is a transition to the double cross Ashi. Where now, he's going to stuff it. The legs, its body is in the way, but... Kind of easy to still see what's happening here. Yeah, here's a good image of it. The secondary leg is pulled across this hip. Okay, now both legs 
are across the body. Maybe we'll get a better angle in a moment. Yeah, so here, look, Keith's right leg is over Junie's right hip, and his left leg is over Junie's left hip. So the legs are going like across the body, right? This is called a cross ashi because the primary leg, Keith's left leg, goes across Junie's center line. Here, both legs go across the center line. So that's what makes it a double cross ashi. And the power of this is that it enables you to use your uh, right arm to control the secondary leg. And now your left arm is completely free to pursue heel exposure on the left leg, okay? And you don't ever need to let go of the secondary leg. You could hypothetically hold on to the secondary leg, catch the heel, and then finish him with one hand, all while holding the secondary leg. It's, it's definitely possible, okay? It's obviously going to be a little more difficult to get strong breaking pressure, you know, with, with one arm rather than two, uh, but it is possible. And if you could do it that way, you'd be able to maintain control the entire time. The weakness of the double cross Ashi is that it doesn't really do that much to limit his hip movement, okay? He can still go side to side on his hips pretty effectively, which is really all Keith needs to do here to hide his heel. Now, it's still a horrible position to be in for, for Keith, okay? You would not want to let yourself get put here, even if you're very confident defensively, um, because it's hard to escape. You know, the guy can keep holding the secondary leg with an overhook, and he can just keep pursuing heel exposure really indefinitely, hypothetically. Um, and if you fuck up a single time, you're going to get heel hooked, right? Um, and Juni could hypothetically heel hook either leg. Obviously, a heel hook on the secondary leg will not be as strong, but you could still threaten that, right? So here's a good image of what's happening. Now, how is Keith going to get out of here, okay? What you want to do when you're in the double cross Ashi is prioritize defense on the primary leg. If someone catches the heel of your secondary leg, they can hurt you for sure. I was rolling with a training partner of mine uh, one time and I was in Keith's position here and he caught the heel of my secondary leg and I didn't really take it that seriously and oh man, I should have tapped. Eventually I got out, but it hurt my knee. Like I didn't tap because I was like, oh, it's not a big deal. I, you know, he can't put as much braking pressure into me. Nope, it was pretty strong. Uh, I was able to get out, but my knee was hurting for a few days. I, I should have tapped to that, okay? Um, but regardless, still, of course, we want to prioritize defense on the primary leg because, yes, can he hurt you if he catches the heel of the secondary leg? For sure. But his hips are not around that leg. If he catches the heel of your primary leg, you're pretty fucked, okay? If he knows what he's doing, you're pretty fucked, okay? He's going to break your shit, right? So we got to prioritize that. That's what Keith's doing here. Juni could catch the heel of the secondary leg, but look, this is a high stakes tournament. This is fucking ADCC trials, okay? Uh, Keith's probably willing to take a pop on the secondary leg in order to get out. And if Juni were to go for that, if he were to, the heel's right here, he could punch back for it. If he were to go for that, much easier for Keith to escape the secondary leg. So Juni does a wise move and he continues to hold onto the secondary leg. So what Keith does is he actively retracts the, the knee to the shoulder. So when you're in this position, the two things you want to do defensively, focus on defense of the primary leg. Don't disregard defense on the secondary leg, but always place priority on the defense for the primary leg and constantly pull the knee of your secondary leg towards your uh, your shoulders. Okay. Here, if Junior were to go back for the heel hug, the knee is so close to the shoulders, Keith will probably have no problem toe slipping very easily, uh, and then his secondary leg is free. Okay. which is pretty much what's about to happen. Oh, that was, that was, <laughs> that was good, actually. He catches the heel. This is the strategy here. He catches the heel. Keith, heel slip very, very well. Actually, the heel slip or the heel slip? Yeah, that's the heel slip. Okay. Anyway. A toe slip is when your toe is passed in front of the bicep. Heel slip when your heel passes over the top of the forearm. Um, both can work successfully to escape a heel hook. Okay, so here, he gets out. He's drawing his secondary leg through his face. He's hand fighting aggressively. He's able to free his leg. See the hand fight here? That's what ultimately... That, in conjunction with aggressively pulling the knee towards his shoulders, is what got him out. Now, right away, he grips this leg, and he starts pummeling this leg. 
now he has a honey stick. Let's do that again. This is, I think, the best example of the honey stick working successfully in high level competition. Nice pummel, gets a secondary leg, uh, sorry, gets the leg. Now look, he grips above and below the knee, pulls, and then extends. Bang, very nice. He's gonna lock his legs and consolidate the position. Now this is winnable for either guy. This is winnable for either guy. We're gonna look at Dean Lester in a moment in the same situation uh, succeeding from Junie's uh, point of view. Okay, but here Keith succeeds. First he catches the heel. One of the weaknesses from this honey stick is that it can actually be really hard to get strong bridging pressure into the side or the back of the knee to, to finish the heel hook, okay? Um, let's just look at how long it takes Keith to finish. Bridging, bridging, bridging. The thing is, is that the uh, left, no, the right leg of Juni here on the inside actually interrupts Keith's bridging ability. So you see the right leg is in front of Keith's hips here. So Keith's bridging is interrupted by this leg. So it, it's not as easy to get a good break here as you might think if someone is willing to take a few pops okay now that's not to say it's impossible because keith does get the tap and i'm sure juni would not have tapped unless there was something about to break okay but it can be harder than than you'd think keith is going going this is a strong rotational outside heel hook here but because juni's got this secondary leg on the inside it can be difficult it can be difficult He's going to slip, or might have already slipped, I forget. Yeah, gets a tap. He has to switch to a reverse figure four, which is one of the strongest outside heel hook grips. It slips right there. So on the first attempt, it slipped. The heel is very close to the bicep. Now, if you know how I like to finish the outside heel hook now, I do put the heel close to the bicep. Um, but here, Keith would not be passing the baseball bat test, okay? So it's okay to have the heel very close to your bicep, provided you are passing the baseball bat test, uh, wherein this hand could be capable of gripping the heel of the leg we're attacking as if it's a baseball. What that means is that the heel is not slipping over the forearm, okay? If it's if it's uh, starting to slip over the forearm, the heel will not be graspable as if it was like a baseball you're picking up off the floor. Here, uh, the heel is starting to slip over the forearm. What, what Keith would want to do is draw his elbow into his torso to pass the baseball bat test. But yeah, ultimately, it doesn't matter. He can tap with another grip. So that catches it again. Now he makes an adjustment with his grip. Here he's passing the baseball bat test because the elbow is closer to the ribs. But he still feels like that's not tight enough. He switches. And then this is one of the tightest outside heel hook grips, especially for rotational heel hooks, which is what he's doing right now. Okay, This is a reverse figure four grip. You get this. You can bridge hard, even with this secondary leg interrupting uh, the ability of your hips to access the knee of the primary leg, you still can get like a really, really strong finish. Yeah, I mean, if you look at Junie's face, that's clearly doing damage. And he gets a tap. So beautiful display of cross hashi defense into a very good honey stick counter. All right. Now we're going to look at the other side of the coin. Dean Lister versus Joao Assis. At, this is the finals of ADCC 2011. The setup is very different. It's not from Cross Ashi, but we're going to see it's the same exact situation um, uh, as uh, the last match. Joao falls back for an outside heel hook. Now here, Dean is ultimately going to take his left leg and bring it over the top of uh, Joao's body. When someone's going for outside leg locks on us, we have a couple different potential defensive strategies. We can go behind or in front of the torso. If we're going behind the torso, that's what Alan Belcher used against Husamal Poliaris very successfully. He was, I think he was coached by Dean Lister on the buildup to that fight. I could be mistaken, but I think he was. Anyway, that's what he's, that's what Dean is trying to do here. I think going in front of the torso is generally better, but going uh, behind the torso can work. So there's a really great match, um, Damian Anderson versus Carlos Goiton, I think is his name. He's a training partner of Marvin Castells, very creative grappler. If you guys can find that match on YouTube, Carlos does some really cool stuff defensively uh, with a behind-the-back uh, outside Ashi defensive strategy. Okay. Anyway, 
It's not working for Dean. He goes to what I think is a better defensive strategy. He goes in front of the torso. You know, it's going, this leg is going in front of the torso. A roll. And then he gets this leg underneath his own leg. Now we are essentially in a honey stick. Same situation. All right. So Joao has what we call a honey stick. The situation that Dean's in is what I call the opposite hip ashi. Okay. So the opposite hip ashi is, in my opinion, it's probably the single strongest breaking position for an inside heel hook. Now it's not great for digging. It's not great for exposing the heel because there are certain defensive problems someone can present for us that this position does not have answers for. But here, if the guy is focused, on, if the guy is focused on digging for his own outside heel hook, he can't really present us with those defensive problems, right? So if Joao were to turn onto his left hip and hide his heel, um, yes, it would be very difficult for Dean to dig for the heel hook here, the inside heel hook. But if Joao is focused on going for this outside heel hook, Dean can go for his own inside heel hook. So here, if we see, uh, Joao catches the heel, but Dean's ballet footing, okay? If you look at the heel here, it is not passing the baseball bat test. The heel is starting to pass over the form because Dean has pointed his toes and made it a very small target. It slips. If you look at where Joao's elbow is, it's in line with the leg here, okay? To pass the baseball bat test, what you want to do is bring the elbow into the ribs, okay? It can be hard. It can be very hard. Dean, meanwhile, is going to run through and he gets his arm to the inside here. He's able to access the heel hook. And now he has a very strong finishing position. I think this is the strongest inside heel hook finishing position. There are three things that someone can do to mitigate your late stage breaking mechanics. Okay. From here, or uh, I should say from anywhere, what someone would want to do to stop you from breaking them are a series of three things coming towards you and hand fighting, separating your legs, okay, and rotating, like spinning, right? Um, or they could heel slip or toe slip. So I guess we can say four things, okay? Um, it's very hard to do any of those here, okay? And then you get a very strong rotational uh, finish. Another match where you can see this exact position being used to finish a rotational inside heel hook is Toru Kitaoka versus Taras Sapa. That's an MMA fight. Um, I saw, I've seen that on like Russian websites before. If you just Google that, it'll probably come up. Yeah. Anyway, let's break this down. So here, uh, Dean wants to get his right arm to the inside of Joao's leg here. Now, Joao is locking with the left leg on bottom. This is actually, I think, a very good potential defensive strategy, a very high-level defensive strategy. It looks like his right, he uh, yeah, his right heel is exposed. The reality is, the space underneath the right heel, which Dean would want to occupy with his right arm, is actually protected by the, uh, the top of Joao's left foot. So there's not really that much space there to catch the heel, right? It's so covered by the left leg of Joao. Okay, so this is actually a, a pretty good defensive strategy. Uh, years ago, I was shown this by Gary Tonin, actually. And this is a this can be a really good way to escape the cross ashi and avoid Aoki lock counters. But that's a topic for another video. Anyway, uh, for whatever reason, Joao stopped doing it. He might have even been doing this accidentally. I really have no idea. <laughs> then Dean gets his right arm to the inside. Okay, now... Punch back, get the inside heel off. Okay, and he has a very, very strong finish. He won this exchange here because of two things. One, he was able to hide his heel successfully. He ballet foots. Here is not ballet footing, but before, go back to before. He's ballet footing, very, very strong. And as he's doing this, he's fighting to get his right arm in between Joao's legs. Okay, how I like to do this normally, if the legs are locked the other way, which is how they, they're how they usually lock, is you go underneath the knee to this space right here, and then you punch your your, your arm. I shouldn't say punch. You kind of like climb your uh, your arm down the leg to incrementally create uh, space between the legs until you're here where your entire arm, and you can also put your shoulder between the legs so the guy can't relock his legs. The only de defense that Joao would have at this point is hiding the heel and rotating onto his left hip 
which would stop his ability to effectively dig for the outside heel hook, okay, which is what I think I was focused on here, okay? Dean capitalizes upon that. He capitalizes upon this this um, gap between the legs that he's created, comes back, catches the heel. It's a very strong finish, okay? So this is how, from either side of this situation, you can effectively win uh, in these exchanges, okay? Who do I think is in a better situation? Um, I don't think either inherently, right? Um, either can win, right? My general strategy from here, from either side of the coin, is this. Try to catch the heel. Or you can even go ankle locks or aoki locks. Try to pursue submission. But should you find yourself in a prolonged shootout here, instead, I would start to prioritize defense and advancing to a more asymmetrical position or even just escaping altogether. Um, I don't want to be in these long-term, like, leg lock shootouts where, like, you know, a single mistake can get you fucked over. So I would prioritize shifting to defense and then slowly work instead to, instead of going right for the submission then and there, which can work if you, if you get, can get that from the outset, that's great. But if that's not available to you, focus on defense and focus on stacking the odds in your favor before you shift back into offense.